Rebecca, sense of direction lady that you are, um, is here to be asked questions about something I know very little about, but I'm intrigued about, and that is retreats. So Rebecca, over to you um, about retreats. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, this is something that I've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, we started off with a couple of residential retreats, but then we changed them to day retreats. So we found that actually um, a, a whole weekend is quite a long time to commit uh, to, to for people, especially women who we aim it at if they've got families and things. So a day retreat, the idea behind these is to... Um, provide space and time for some self-care, some creativity, and get people away from their normal environment for a day to give them um, an opportunity to, I suppose, reconnect with themselves. I know that sound, might sound airy-fairy to some people, but actually I think when we've got so many distractions and then pulled in so many different directions, we like to help people find who they are again, really, and, and just... Have a have a creative fun day with other women. No, you, you mentioned the women women thing. I'll pick you up on that in a bit, and you know it's coming. Um, but I guess retreating from what? I mean, I mean, is there any is there any power and significance in the word retreat? Or you know, if I'm retreating, I'm I'm sort of uh, moving away from something. I guess is, is is there any element of that in there? I suppose there is, yeah, definitely moving away from the busyness of life and the busyness of distractions. We encourage people to turn their phones off or put them on mm -hmm. silent. And we're in a beautiful, quaint little village in the Peak District. And as soon as you drive into that village, you feel like you're sort of stepping back in time. It's one of those where there's a pub, which is a very good pub, a community shop, a school and a couple of churches and a village hall. And that's pretty much it. And it's surrounded by beautiful rolling hills. So you are retreating from the noisiness and the distractions of everyday life, basically. So, yeah, there is a, there is a, a retreat. So you and I both know Sheffield. I was a student. You're there now. You couldn't hold this at the top of Pinston Street. Mm. Wouldn't quite have the same effect, no. <laughs> because we use, so we've chosen the location specially. The location is um like i said it's in the peak district it is a beautiful location so we use the location because in the afternoon i lead a mindful sort of coaching walk we tap into that power of nature in the afternoon so the the environment is is quite important to me specifically when i'm leading that walk this is raising questions for me uh i guess my only flirtation with this i've never done this sort of thing myself um is being amongst people that also have done this, but they've tended to do it um, in almost a silent retreat. It's like people go away into corners of a big garden and sit there for hours on their own type thing. I guess there are different approaches and different ways you can do this. Yeah, it does get quite quiet in the morning sometimes. So we encourage discussion and chat. It, it's not forced. We, we, we always have a theme for the day. And we always have some activities, but we allow the day to flow naturally, depending on what comes up, who comes along. But when people get engrossed and absorbed in the painting activity, which is the, the activity in the morning, watercolour painting, there is often a silence that sort of descends naturally on the group because everybody's absorbed and engaged in their own little world while they're while they're painting. And you don't have to be arty. So before that even comes up, you don't have to be arty. This is this is not about creating a masterpiece. This is about a mindful practice where you get to literally play with colour, you know, and it's, it's all abstract. We use colour. We use different patterns, you know, we'll have sort of, like I say, a loose theme. So we might all be given the same instructions, but the artwork at the end of it is all very different. So it's the activity that lends itself to silence, but it's not it's not enforced. It's, it just naturally descends when people are engr engrossed in, in the activity. Well, this is a weekend thing, a weekday thing. And is that important to the day of the week? I don't know. We've held it on Sundays for the last few years. Uh, it's always been a Sunday. We find that that's quite a nice, peaceful day. So it doesn't take up the whole weekend. Often, if it is women, they've got, you know, if they've got kids or other commitments, then 
often one day of the weekend is usually taken up so we've done it on a Sunday um but we have we are sort of considering whether it would be nice to hold something in the week as well for for women perhaps who would like to take a day out of work or, or use their time differently in the week this question out of ignorance rather than with any purpose does it sound at all like therapy is it group therapy am I using the wrong word to describe this is is therapy in there at all anywhere I think you I think participants may find it therapeutic but it's not therapy the we we know we never say it's therapy but I think it's there's a lot of different elements to it in some respects because there is the the mindful activity and that's a deliberate activity the painting creative activities help us to access a different part of our brain we do like I said we we sort of encourage discussion as we're doing this you know so naturally um questions will come up or topics will come up around sort of self-care or how we're feeling and you know we do this seasonally so that comes into it a lot as well so we have it's called joy journey of you is what it stands for so we have one in winter spring summer and autumn and that's what they're called so it's joy in spring joy in summer and the idea is that we tap into that seasonal process as well so we, we're using the season so the next one that's coming up is summer and the theme is around confidence and growth so thinking about how so I think sometimes we feel more confident in the summer when the weather's a bit better we're out and about a little bit more so the seasons and weather impacts on how we feel so we use that as one of the talking points so there's definitely elements of of that that comes into it as well so you run single gender now, I'm always careful about my my labels these days, but um, uh, people who I would, you know, would, you, you're seeking women for these. You're not seeking blokes, if you like. Um, he says trying to throw a shovel away and climb into the shallow hole. He's built, built for himself around the deeper one he could have done. Um, what's the what's the logic behind making this um, a women-friendly well, men unfriendly or men unwelcome? But what? How would you say men sit in this? <laughs> it's, we're certainly not anti-men at all. It just <laughs> developed that way. And we did, in the early days, we did actually open up to men and women. We just didn't get any interest from men. I think sometimes men are a little bit more reluctant to engage in these type of activities. I, th I think there's sort of a natural tendency for, for women to be more open to this. We certainly wouldn't be against it. But I think it provides a, a safe space for whoever comes along, but it is aimed at women. It's it's one of those marketing things, I suppose. You can out, you can open it to anybody and everyone, but then nobody's interested because you're not targeting a specific person. When you target it at women, then it's easier to sort of explain things, I suppose, in some sure. respects. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to digress into what that might be an indicator of, but... I've long taken the view that women just engage in more developmental things more actively than men. And this is probably a more acute example of that by its nature. So, yes. so what do you hope people go away with? You, I, I wrote down reconnecting with themselves and being in self-care. Um, yeah, the, I, I get that. I get those are the headlines, but what do you what do you hope people will go away and and do better for themselves as a result of a retreat the self-care is really important to us so we hope to help people self-care will always come up in one way or another on, on all of the retreats that we do so we hope to encourage them either better or more self-care practices and allowing people to have that time for themselves but i think help, help me a bit help me a bit i don't probably don't understand the self-care label mm, yeah so sometimes it's just about having space for yourself to engage in activities that you enjoy you know oh. and having leisure time is, is certainly one of them I think sometimes especially women if they if they've got families and things they can feel slightly guilty putting themselves first and doing things mm -hmm. just for them rather than doing the chores at home or feeding people or working or whatever. It's sounding horribly 1950s here, but it's reality, isn't it? It is reality, unfortunately. You know, I think we're, we're all busy and we all have lots of things to do. So actually taking the time out. So we encourage people to 
just be there for themselves that day and do something that's fun and we we give them ideas that they can do at home as well you know so you know some tips for going out when they're walking to engage with the sensors the watercolor painting is very easy to do you don't need much equipment to do that or it could just be drawing you know and engaging that creative side the other thing that's important on these retreats is the food um <laughs> food, <I love food. laughs> and that's a, an important part of the day sitting down and sharing a meal with these women is wonderful <laughs> but it's not just any meal we we have a lady who comes in you forage no we don't we don't forage it's not, it's not. <laughs> we have a lady who comes in and actually prepares it for us you know she'll, she'll bring some ready prepared but she'll prepare it there for us it's not like your sandwiches and your sausage rolls this is vegan which again sometimes people think oh vegan but it's the most colorful array of food that you can ever expect and so tasty i mean it, it, we had what did we have on the last one we often have sort of a curry type thing or a soup type thing again that would be seasonal depending on the time of year and everybody comments on the food on how nice it is and, and how different it is to your usual sort of finger buffy type thing you know it's always really really satisfying so that's always part of the day is celebrating and having food together before we go out for the walk in the afternoon okay time's always against this but i just want to squeeze this one in this sounds to me like a self-funded people there individually for themselves is there a corporate element to this that's a horrible word is this something organizations should think about uh do they where are organizations with all this sort of stuff i think they should think about it because it provides an opportunity for people to look after themselves and if you look after yourself you're more productive and and that's sort of looking at it from an employer's point of view if you've got happy staff who are looking after themselves you've got more productive staff so i think this would be a really great opportunity for those employers who are forward thinking and are genuinely interested in the well-being of their staff you know, it would definitely, you know, it would definitely be worthwhile the investment in that. Yeah, it's not a team building event and that sort of stuff. It's, it's very different to that. I can, I see that. Yeah, yeah. It's always, it's a way of building connections with people, but it's not what would call a team building day. No. And being away, the retreat is to be away from what would otherwise distract, whether that's a workplace, whether it's a family place. I, I, I see that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else you want to squeeze in that um, I, I've not asked you about that you think is important to raise? I just think for some women, we, we have some women who come on each one throughout the year and they see it as almost like an anchor point that is something to look forward to. They know that that's something in their calendar just for themselves, you know. And so you can you can come once or you can come all four times throughout the year. You know, you'll get a warm welcome regardless. Well, it's a good place to end. I sure I, we can we can retreat, fade away into the background as we cease this recording once he works out where the button is these days. Um, and he's not found it yet, so I'll just keep babbling on. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's moved up there. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>